And so yes, as Tom says, the name, you know, the people are often very confused about hooks and filters. So I'm going to try and make try and make it quite simple. And uh, first thing that uh, I'll say, hooks and filters are actually everywhere throughout the WordPress source code. This is just even a core, and plugins also have their own. And um, if we didn't have them, WordPress, you know, you couldn't do anything with it. It's our, it's, it's a developer's gateway into WordPress to make all these changes, you know, enhance it. Let's say if we didn't have it, we probably wouldn't have any of the plugins that we do have, you know, the massive amounts of plugins we do. So if you're, um, as he said also, you know, if I'm looking at source code and I go, ser I go searching for things that do action and apply filters, and when I see those, you know, those code calls there, I know that's an opportunity for me to interact with that, with that plugin or with WordPress at that particular point in time. Um, so, you know, like WooCommerce is a fantastic example of tons of these around the place, so you don't actually have to go and hacking those ones. And certainly WordPress Core has a lot of them as well, um, so you don't have to hack it. I did a search for um, WordPress uh, 495 and I found 867 do action calls and 1743 applied filters calls. That's a huge number. Um, it's this thing on the right hand side, might be a little hard to see. Um, one of the actions that you might come across is WP head. You'll see it in your, you probably see it a lot of time in themes. Um, so in WordPress itself adds a lot of code, uses that particular action to add a lot of code in there. Um, so I mean, I've done, I think it was about 20 in, of WP head. And I'll give you examples of what, what it's doing in those cases. Um, so first thing to do is what's the difference between actions and filters? Uh, hooks is a bad name, I think really it's, you know, it doesn't really apply it, but it might be, you might be thinking that you can hook your way into the source code or into the execution of WordPress and do something. But with the actions and uh, filters, which are the two different types that are available in the code, um, actions allow you to, it's, when you see do action, that's a, you know, an action point. Um, and then WordPress is going to see who's going to be, who wants to run at that point in time. What it's doing is you can run your code at that particular point in time. You don't return any data, and that's the difference between different filters, but you get to run your code. When you see apply filters, it's what it's going to do is anyone who wants to run some code at that point is given some data, you know, which is obviously relevant at that point, and there, you know, you can do your code and then you're, uh, you're expected to return some data with it. Um, so the way the to give a metaphor again to try and help understand it, uh, I would describe you know, actions like a music festival. So, for example, the BBC's biggest news, biggest weekend is on at the moment over near the Titanic Quarter. And today, the number back. So, let's say you decide you want to see Nina Cherry this afternoon. What the, when this with the music festival here? You say you say to somebody, "Hey, look, I want to see Nina Cherry. Give me a call when she's coming on stage." And you know, when you get that call, you say, "I just if I ever get my Nina Cherry shirt on, I better get my little." My old CD, roll like sushi, way back there, and you know, get all ready to show I'm a real fan, and you know, remember all those words and stuff like that, and get the Michael Stipe impression going. And um, so essentially, what you you know, when in your code, you're going to write something like add action. This is the action name. So when you see a do action call earlier on, it has it that that bit there. Then this is the name of your code, and this is the position. And um, by default, this is going to be number ten. But if you decided it's to do a queuing. So when the, when the when WordPress comes along, word plugin goes along the band at this particular point in time, so do action band name, it has a quick look, hey, who wants to be called and who wants to be called in what order? You might decide, I want to be called first, second, third, and that becomes more relevant depending on what you're trying to do. But most of the time, people don't do anything there. 10 is fine, you know, they pick 10 so you can do lower numbers. And I mean, you can have any number you want, you can have 10,000, there's no upper, there's no upper number to it. So, um, so that's kind of all the the end. And sorry for that. Okay, so with core, um, with regard with do actions in WordPress, I mean, I said I saw there was eight, or like a ton of there was eight hundred. I said, um, of the, yes, eight hundred. With your look at what happened, um, there's a lot of core, there's a lot of ones that you see are, when your when the page has been executed. You know, when you make a request all the way to the end of the you know the page being delivered, the core calls a number of plugins or actions that you know people are typical ones you will use. You'll see things like plugins loaded, which indicates all the plugins are all loaded. You know, now somebody can do something. And after the theme is now being loaded, and then the init one Tom showed that yesterday when he was registered, or earlier on rather, when he was showing the registered taxonomies, you do that. He also showed pre-guest posts, um, you know, where you can decide to modify the filter. And the one I showed earlier, your WP head. So, but there's, there is a ton of others. This particular codex reference, um, this is about 50 of them. 
and it gives you an idea if you're doing something with you know in the thing with your WordPress uh, with your page where you want to execute. For example, you can have something that executes right at the very end where you want to do some tidying, uh, but it lists them all there, and there are obviously you know 810 more. Um, the plugins, and then with regards to that last one, they're all done in certain times, okay? And, um, so, well, and they become quite important, especially with plugin loading. Um, is a good, I think it's a good example about this. If, for example, plugins, um, there's, a, there's a database entry which has active plugins, and it lists them all alphabetically. Um, and it, it, well, WordPress comes along and just runs and loads those all in that order. Now, if you're WooCommerce being right down the end of the alphabet, if I have a plugin that's called Amazing, you know, Advanced WooCommerce, it's going to get run before WooCommerce. So if I wanted to do something with WooCommerce, I can't start running WooCommerce functions until that's loaded. You know, loaded. So what I have to do in my code is, I'll say, oh, actually, my code I really want to run, run it on the plugins loaded action. So that won't actually get run. So to, that's like saying, hey, tell me when everything's loaded, and come back to me, and I'll run my code. So when everything gets loaded, now WooCommerce is loaded. Now I can come back. I, you know, I'm called and say, hey, do your stuff now. So. Um, so I'm not running stuff early, having scenarios whereby, oh, hey, this function doesn't exist. Uh, you know, you're actually sort of saying, you know, just put me down for this, come back later, and I'll do it. And you, that's the, when you're doing all your code, you, when you have your plugin, if you want to run something at the very end, you know, your plugin's actually loaded really, really early on, but you don't get your code calls later on. That's the whole thing about actions, and more just putting in like that music act that said, you know, I'm putting my register, registering my interest very early on, but. You know, I'm not going to get called till much to the appropriate right time. And um, so, here's a super simple example of what, what it would look like. Um, I say in the in the code, you're in. So you you write that action. This is the action name you just see. It's my function name. I just put it in there, for example. And, and this is what it looked like. I have my function. So I, because it's an action, I said it was. It's you actually get to do something. You're not actually returning any data. So that's what it's something there. Um, and look, I'm just going to echo comp. So if, if I use the code, I've often said to people, uh, if you want, you know, if they say, oh, my action, my code's not working, I said, well, just put something in there that's going to render in your HTML. You know, and as a comment, it's not going to damage what the page has been produced, but at least you could view source and go, look, 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 that is run. You know, that's, then you can start working on what the rest of them are. Um, as I say, you know, this third one is defaults 10, so I didn't need to add it, but just, just to show you where it can be, but it's any positive number it can be. Um, the example earlier on was WP Head, and you saw that uh, small screenshot. Of it. it was from one of the core source files that there was a ton of um, a ton of code that's added to it. So within WordPress core, really, this is the line that calls all those guys. And um, so what WordPress does, it goes, oh, hey, all those guys who wanted to run at this particular point in time, let's start running them. So this this function here, which is in this is 23, and um, said. And an on add action, WP head called this function. And that function actually pretty much just does this particular markup. So when you look to see, if you look to one of, you know, if you do a view source and say, hey, what version of WordPress am I working on here? That's where that line came from that function. And that's why you'll often see these uh, security plugins or optimization plugins where they remove that, try and anonymize it so hopefully you know, no zero day function, zero day vulnerabilities are being exposed. And all they're doing is actually just stopping that running. So, an ex sort of an example, you know, let me do an example here where there's multiple uses for do action. Um, and one example I would give is, you know, adding content. Like, like the WP generator, you add a particular bit of content into the markup. If I could do something similar, hey, look, I want to, you know, I want to add my own name into the markup to show I wrote this particular page. And so what I just do is I do an add action, add my own name, and this is my code here. And all it does is spit out the, you know, spit out some markup. And so obviously I have to drop it out of uh, PHP and go back in again. That's why I didn't have to do an echo call. And so that's a simple example there. Um, so you can, another one you can also do is, you know, when you do an add action, again, also do with the order things are running. You can you can come to an action and say, oh, by the way, I want to remove something else. Um, I'll show you how that would work. So I said with the security plugins, they might decide, hey, we don't want to expose the WordPress version. So what they will do is. You know, you'll say, uh, so say this was being added by this. So what I do, and this is where the priority comes into it, um, and I, because obviously if I run my, if my code gets run before this, and I say, hey, remove this particular thing, but it hasn't been added to the list, the, you know, the, the music uh, interest list, so I can't add it. So what I have to do is I'm coming across here and say, for 
WP head. No, I'm going to jump. I'm going to jump in and remove just just before, just jump ahead in the queue before this other one got is about to be run, and I'll just remove it. So that I mean that's so that's what those security buckets probably do something similar to that. Like might, they might use a slightly different action, but they have, they're, they have to run it. They have to run. If they made, if they made that number eleven. The other that function's already run. It's too late. You know you're gone. So you have to jump, jump in before I can take it out. Um, and you can you can do that. Anything that has been an ad action has been added by ad action. You can pretty much jump ahead of it and remove. You know. Uh, so you can, you can disable stuff. With, you know, WooCommerce is out. You know, has adds a lot of stuff with ad action. Again, you can use this type of scenario, jumping in before they get run and do something, take them out, change their order. The, uh, another scenario in this uh, WooCommerce one is um, if you want to move stuff around. So WooCommerce, they, I don't know what version was, they changed their templates. So instead of actually having everything in big templates that were quite inflexible that required you to edit template files, they moved, they changed to be in ad actions. So they, what they would have is like a single do action call and earlier on they would have said add action, they'd say, oh, add the price, add the image, add the meta, add the short description, add the you know, script, you know, the long description, and the variable fields, all those things added by that. And so what that allows you to do is change things around or remove things if you decided you wanted to hide the title or you wanted to hide the price until people are you know, logged into your site. And that's what they would do is they would hide it. They would, use it. They would have to edit it in a template file. So for the example here is, I decided here, uh, you want, I want to move things around. And um, okay, so what I do is I jump in just before I jump in. This this particular action is called before all this stuff here. So what I do is I jump in pretty early and um, then start moving stuff around. And what I'm doing here, this one here, when you do a remove action, you have to call it. <coughs> you have to call exactly the same add action, you know, but you just change remove to add. So in in WooCommerce code, source code, it'll have add action all that, and you know, template single price with a property of 10. And so what I have to do is I have to go change that to remove, and I'm going to add it in a certain different spots. So what I'm actually doing is, instead of it appearing in you know, the 10th position, we run, I'm running it earlier, so the price will probably be very, very high up on the page. I do have an example on my, on my, uh, my own website where I just, a very exaggerated example where I just basically turned the whole WooCommerce page upside down by doing this type of thing, by removing them all and then adding them up in a completely different order. Um, just to show that you don't need to move, modify template files, because obviously that becomes a nightmare when they when WooCommerce updates theirs. Um, now on the filters, I think I, I've often had a bit more difficulty with filters, partially because of the actual syntax involved a bit longer. Um, the so what I would compare it to like a pass the parcel. I don't know, hopefully everyone's familiar with that idea of the party game where somebody has a parcel. And it has a gift wrapped inside it, there's multiple layers of wrapping paper, and as it goes along, as the music stops, the child takes a piece of wrapping paper off it. Eventually, when all the pieces of paper are removed, and it goes around in a circle, they win that prize. So that type of idea is where they're being passed, when you're, when you're um, with the added filters, you, your function is given some data, we'll call that the parcel, and the WordPress expects that parcel to come back. Now, the parcel could be unchanged, it can be changed. You, know, like you can add more wrapping paper, you can remove wrapping paper, you can, you can switch it to completely different parts in there, but you do have to return something back. Um, so, in you know, so essentially, when we had the add action call, the add action call ended there. But whereas uh, in with filters, you might be you might be you might be passing it a number of pieces of data to you. So you have that. This is accounting for that. So I'll give an example of the content. So when you call the function the content, I know it has the same name as the filter, but they are very different. And so to say, when you call the content, it goes and calls the content filter. So that allows people, that allows WordPress, for example, to change all the, uh, your smileys can get changed. You can actually, uh, I, don't, I don't think it does embed. There's a number of different things it does. And it might, it might put in paragraph tags and you know, that type of thing. And, and short codes are getting run as well. So, if you wanted to make some stuff, for example, if I wanted to append, add something to the end of my all my posts, you know, not just footers on end, I would do something add filter again. It looks very like the add action call, um, and so I, this is the actual name of the thing. This is my my function because there's only one um, because I'm going for position ten, you know, in order, and there's only one uh, parameter. They become default. It's ten and one, so I don't actually have to add them, but. I'm, ex I'm receiving this bit of data, and so what I'm all, all I'm doing is just taking the, um, that bit of, returning that bit of data and just doing this at the end. 
<coughs> so again, it's a very, very simple way to do stuff. Uh, and you know, that's a very simple example. They do sometimes get um, a little bit more complicated. And this is where the, the 10 and 2 come in. So in WooCommerce, for example, when, uh, when, they, when, when they have a thing that says the product is in stock, and you can decide to change it, you could remove it from type off and remove it from clients, um, or you can want to decide you want to, you know, say if it's, if it's on sale. In this example, I'm going to say if it's on sale, you just show nothing. And um, you, you know, you, you might want to put the back orders and so forth. So with the add filter, you can say add filter. Now here's my particular function name, and I'm going to when you have a two here, you have to add a ten. And so what? Because I'm going to say it's two items we pass to it. So what is, what WooCommerce is passing to you is it's passing in the string that would say in stock, and it's passing in the product object. So when I have this product object now, I can this is that I can check it. I can check the price. And this might say well, if it's on sale, return nothing. Otherwise, return it. And uh, so that's again, that's you know a simple way of changing stuff. I didn't have to modify any template file, and I can make it. I can add extra. I can add those extra conditions here. I could just I could change it to be saying hey, super on sale by now, by early, or you know if it's not on sale, just stick with it. You know, so I you can choose to change it. Um, Another one I often do when I'm learning how to uh, about a particular um, filter, because um, you often sort of say, "Well, I wonder if this is the right filter I've chosen for this particular bug fix." Um, you might what I often do is, uh, you know, I, I check the data that's coming to me. So, um, for example, here what I'm doing, and this goes back to uh, the, the talk this morning about debugging. Um, so I say, "Well, I, uh, I'm adding a filter here. I'm actually like, this filter actually doesn't modify any data; it returns the data." But I made a point of actually noting what data came into it. I'm writing it to the error log, hopefully it's my uh, debug log and WP constant area. And I'm also noting the page. So, I, so therefore what I can do is I can run, run my page, nothing has changed. I can go to the error log and say, hey, you know, what, what, what data was passed to this function and what page it was. And I can learn something about it. You know? And if and this is a very simple one that was been passed, but if, like that, um, with the WooCommerce one, if I can pass the product, you know, I might, I, I maybe didn't know that, I don't know what actual spring came in, I don't know what's there, I can actually do, I can do a var uh, export of product and say, hey, what data is coming to me, and I say, well, is this going to be useful, or can I, do I need to use that data to find something else, or, um, so the, the big question um, is, um, is where does all this code go? So if you, if you were to write a small little bit of code like that, it's like, where do you put it? Um, you, you know, you might not want to put it into your uh, theme, you know, you may only have a parents theme and you say, well, I can't be modifying, that's not a great idea at all. Um, and you say, well, but I think it's actually much easier. It's, you know, it's, if, you, if you have a child theme, you can throw it into its functions.php file. But you may have code that's, you might say to yourself, I'm going to be changing this theme in the next while, but this particular bit of code, I don't want it to disappear. You know, and no matter what theme I'm going to use, I'm going to have this particular feature. So then you want to pull it somewhere else. I, I would recommend something we call a functional plugin. Um, Previous talk, Tom said you can go to generate wp.com and it'll generate this type of stuff for you. But it's a very, you know, it's a very simple one. I just say that, okay, call it that. Um, I give it to you a URL and a quick description because these, these, certainly these two bits of text will appear under um, under plugins, so you know which plugin is there. And um, I think it's also very useful that you can, when it's a plugin, you can activate it, deactivate it, especially if it's something you only have for temporary use or for a very short term use while you're debugging. Um, so any of the snippets of code I had earlier on, you can just add it below this. And it also means that you know you can say you can deactivate it if you didn't like it, or if there was a problem with like if it bombed out when you were trying to if you had a, if you if you put some code in here, let's say you have a spelling mistake in it or a typo in it, and when you try to activate it, WordPress is going to trap that fake layer and not activate it at all. So at least you have them. If you whereas if you put it into your functions.php, you had a mistake in it there, you load up the page, you've got your white screen. You know, whereas you know this one you've caught and you have to, uh, haven't affected anyone you know at all. You just go back and fix it, and then you can activate it and hopefully save it. Um, but so the summary um, is that the, I'd say my metaphors for actions is like you're getting in line for a concert. You know, there's no you're just doing stuff. You know, you're not actually you know you just line up and you do your thing and off you move. Whereas with filters, like a pass parcel, where you're actually dealing with data, you have to return the data, but you can modify it as well. And a functional plugin update is a very safe way to add, add your code that won't damage anything, won't get lost in updates, it won't get lost in uh, theme changes either. So that's it. Right. Right. Yes, right.
really like the analogies. I think they really work well. Yeah, no, it's good. Uh, my only issue with the pass and parcel is built as a rusty PHP developer. Mm -hmm. For filters for me are like a game of pass and parcel where I just can't get the paper off. Mm -hmm. right. So is there any like filters just to me sometimes are quite difficult to just um, parse in terms of understanding mm -hmm. what an applied filter in its intention is doing. Are there any kind of tricks or ways of deciphering how to use a filter that you kind of come across? Because the, the example you get was, was great. Yeah, that's simple. Not, not, that's some filters get incredibly complex in terms of how they I, I agree. Some of them are great. I mean, I've, I had struggled for a while. When, I, when you see an ad filter call, and especially when it's embedded in a line of older stuff, and especially if it's one of those, uh, what's, it, what's the triple one where you have yeah, a question yeah, mark call, yeah. and those ones are really confusing. The one thing I always try to try to remember, and it's very quickly and easy to get, is when you have a when it says that I apply filters, the next parameter is the data that's coming, and they want to come back to you. Yeah. So you could have, like, for example, this one. It's going to it's it said add it said apply filters this bit yeah. here, and it said HTML and then product, and um, you know, and that's where you think, well, oh, I've often looked and gone, which is I really yeah. want to come back, especially yeah. when there's if there's multiple parameters, yeah. um, and that's exactly why we're by me this uh, debugging thing. You know, I always experiment with stuff that way. Okay. And when it comes in, I always do a var export uh, or an error log, an error log of var export of the data to see what it was. Um, and then so now I now I understand what's going through that filter, and then I work, and then I go and add my code back into it. Um, but this is a, this is a very safe way. Always returning what you think should be. You know, you know, you're not trashing stuff. You're not going to get your 500 errors and so forth. And um, but yes, I think it is, especially when they're written, if they're written on a single line, I've gone, you, you know, data equals apply filter something data, so they're passing, they're passing data and sending it right back again. They're easy, they're easy enough to understand, but when it's embedded in a line, it's pain. That's why I always, always go for this. I mean, that's, that's a var export, and var export's the one you use true with, yeah, yeah. Because if you do var export without true, it gets on your page. So it's, it's an error log of var export I always use that it'll send my data to it. It won't send it yeah. to the browser, it'll send it to my error log. Oh. And I can go look and go, oh yeah, I can now I can, and especially if it's a, especially if it's an object or it's an array, and yeah. uh, now you can understand what part of that Start array you want to work, 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 build it back up. Very much, nice. you don't always work. Yeah, yeah no, I wouldn't have yeah. I'd never dive in, but it is, yeah. it is a challenge. Yes, correct. Uh, Good. <coughs> Thank you. Do you ask questions? Yes, John. Yeah, um, it's very easy to end up with a big kind of sequential list of filters and actions, and it kind of feels a little bit sloppy. I'm just kind of wondering, is there any performance issue with a lot of us? Whether it's in a plugin or in the, the functions file? And also, so it actually functions, I think it's a bit, people are often concerned about adding an extra plugin, okay? It's always think, don't add too many plugins. But with regard to WordPress, I mean, if it's in your functions.php or if it's in a plugin, it's just another bit of code. They just have their different names. You know, you might say, oh, it's in my theme, it's in my functions.php in my theme, and that's a huge joke. But, um, and it becomes yeah. difficult to manage. But it's, you know, I mean, these things load extremely quickly. The same, the same code has been executed, you know, depending where you put it. But so the, the no performance impact, I don't think there's any performance benefit for having it in your theme or in a plugin. Mm -hmm. I actually think it's easier to manage if it's in a plugin because if you want to disable it, you can disable just that one bit. It just kind of feels wrong. I, no, I agree. I, mean, I, think, I think it is a it's a misconception in it, and some of it some of it is justified to it not having too many plugins. Um, but I think a lot of the people are oh, people have gone too extreme. Yeah. Look, there are loaded plugins where that particular logic applies completely. But in small cases, I think you know I don't. Think, okay. Yeah, I think it's a, a much easier to manage. Um, for example, like I have I have a folder and um, and it's just it's basically I have WordPress. I think they're called site plugins. I call it. And I have all these little things. For example, there's one, you know when your your body tag, it will tell you, you know, the page it might it doesn't tell you the page URL. Uh, but it has another few things that might say no JS or a few other uh, classes there. Well, one of the ones I found many years ago was adding the page template into it and adding the uh, the URL. So if you decide I want to because right, right now what, in, in your body tag you have something like page dash twelve thirteen, and that would be the ID of the page, which no one's ever gonna remember the page ID. Whereas if you if you put in the page URL, <coughs> so if you have your about us page, it's going to put in page dash about dash us. So when you reference that in your CSS, everyone knows what that means. You know, it's very logical what that means. And uh, you know, instead of page 12, 13, who knows, who's ever going to remember what that is? So that's a small little site plugin that I just throw in 
you know, it's a, it's a very simple one-liner filter, you know, a very short filter, and it just it adds that into it. And again, that's something I would just drop in. I would free, happily copy those things into a client area without yeah. concern about performance. You could have a hundred of those, and it's still going to be faster than using that one slot plugin. Like, you know, it's, and it's, it's, so it's, it's really quality of your plugins and what the plugins it is versus... I, yeah, and I, I gave examples of somebody earlier, some of the clients had a, 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 a WordPress website, they had a massive big plugin, it had 80 modules in it, they were only using two. And one of them was, for example, related to displaying related products at the bottom of a product page. And that was, you know, and I, when I looked about how to remove that, it was, again, it was just a remove filter to, or a remove action call. So now, I, and then there's something similar with the other module you're using. So just by adding like two or three lines, I you know, remove that whole plugin. So even though they're only using two modules, the plugin had to load all those modules and check, are you being used, are you being used, but all the, all the code had been parsed. So now I've reduced it. So, you know, you can, from a, from a person, a non-developer point of view, it was a good move to, to put that in there, you know, otherwise they never figured it out. I had to go, even myself, I had to go well into the code to figure it out. But um, small, you know, cases of that, I think it's, if you can convert it into code, it, I think it ends up being quicker, and it doesn't matter where you work. And if you've ended up with a huge function file with loads and loads and loads of filters, you maybe started off from the wrong place. If you're worried about a huge page being really sloppy because you've had to filter in all this code, there's maybe a chance that you started off from the wrong place. Is it we were trying to do too many things, and do we actually need all of those things? Or the theme or the, the basis we started off from was well away from where the client actually wanted to get to, and you ended up well, having, to, having to rebuild all the way back, you know? Yeah. <coughs> Anyone else questions? Yes, John. I like the idea of the, um, the functional plugin that you can turn it on and off. Is there a way of having that that you can edit the code in your admin interface, yeah, you can actually. If you, if uh, like, if, not, not, sometimes uh, the editor, the, the back end editor is turned off. But if you go into plugin, I think plugins. I think I know. I know the you can the editor is on by default um, if for the themes. You know, you can actually yeah. go with you go into your active theme and uh, you pick the file you want. Um, actually, plugin probably I don't think it is. There's another plugin called Code Snippets. I was going to say that's another option. Yeah, yeah, which which basically lets you manage your in this case, you could manage them, but they're generally done. I, I actually used to use that quite a lot myself, but I've stopped using it because you lose version control. Mm -hmm. So, like, if I'm maintaining and making tweaks to something, if I might, if it's code that's sitting on my hard drive and I've got it committed to a Git repository and I break something, I can roll back. Whereas code snippets, the plugin, while it's great, you see the easiest thing, it's not under version control. So that's the only. Downside. But that would be the that would probably be the easiest one the way to achieve what you're looking for. Yeah. Is, you know, if somebody says, "Oh yeah, just copy this from you know from your Facebook group or something," and you just drop it in there, and it will be you know the ones activated. But again, if there's a, a spelling mistake, it may you know 500 error. You might you know the, I don't know. I, I don't. I, it, I, it, it does do that. Yeah. Does it? Okay, yeah. Well, then you're screwed. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> until, until you can go back and actually, if it's in a database, it's hard. Yeah. Do you could even have to rename the plugin or. Yeah, so, so whereas, like, if, if, if I uploaded mine and activated it, like, um, you know, uh, or if, it, if it's activated and then I, then I upload one with a mistake, it's going to 500 error on me, you know, you have to FTP in and take it out. Whereas if it was in the database, that could be even harder, you know, to find where it is in the database and, you know, remove it. And it may be, it may be in a serialized yeah. area, you know, where they've, they've taken all the code snippets and put them in one database entry, and, you know, and I think it's... That could be a, uh, that could be a major mess. So I don't know. I hope they store it a bit better than that. But uh, and see, so that's why that's why you know if, if you put up a couple bit of code, FTP, and you just zap it, and you're fine. You're flying. You know, you're back to you're back to where you were, and then you can figure out what happened. You go to your error logs and whatever the all this stuff from the, the debugging WordPress talk this morning. Figure out what what actually went wrong. Anyone else? Maybe all our stomachs are rolling. <laughs> Once again, thank you very much, Daniel.